Humility is a strange word and an odd concept. Humility can be difficult to understand. As a word, it comes from the Latin word humilis, which has to do with dirt or earth. So in a sense, being humble is being like dirt. And when we think of dirt, don't we usually think of it as being, well, dirty? Dirt gets on things and ruins things, ruins things. We like to wash it away, hose it down the drain, scrub it away, and keep it at bay. And sometimes if you mix dirt with water, you get something even worse, mud. Furthermore, dirt, dirt is what gets walked on and stepped over. It's under us, under us, it's beneath us. Feet and shoes walk all over dirt. This image of dirt is what might explain our inglorious and lowly opinion of it. But maybe there's another way to look at dirt. God used dirt. This is what the book of Genesis tells us. Genesis tells us that God fashioned man from dirt, from humanness. It's no coincidence then that we are called humans. We are called humans because we come from humus, from dirt. Perhaps our perception of what the word humility means is also closely tied to our perception of what we feel to be the dirtiness of humanity. But there is a dirty little secret. And the secret is revealed when we and the secret is revealed when we look at Jesus' life. Jesus' life on earth is all about humility, lowliness, being treated like dirt, and being stepped on. But the best part about Jesus' dirty secret is that God turns humility upside down. God glorifies humility. God exalts dirt. God raises up dirt from the dirt. To explain this with a concrete example, it might be good to look at the life of St. Euphrosinus the Cook. In our church, St. Euphrosinus' medallion icon is located right above the chanter's stand, second from the left. He's wearing monastic clothing and is holding a branch with three pieces of fruit. His clothes teach us that he was indeed a monk, and the fruit he is holding is part of his story, which goes like this. Euphrosinus was born of peasant parents and consequently was raised without schooling. Later, he entered a monastery becoming a monk. But, si but since he was considered to be a country bumpkin, he was given and kept in the difficult job of serving in the kitchen. In addition to being given this difficult job, he was picked on and mocked by the, some of his brother monks. However, Euphrosinus put up with being picked on because his faith, his faith was strong. His faith and wisdom allowed him to put up with the bullying with peace of mind. He was not troubled in the least by these things. Even though Euphrosinus could not read letters or speak eloquently, he had a beautiful and pure knowledge of God. He kept this wisdom close to himself. It was a secret that only God knew, until one night, when it was revealed in a miraculous way. It was revealed to a priest in Euphrosinus' monastery. One night, while asleep, this good priest found himself in what seemed to be a garden. He was amazed at all the delightful things that he saw. But even more amazingly, he saw Euphrosinus, the cook. Euphrosinus stood in this strange garden, eating from the various good things in the place. The priest came up to Euphrosinus and asked him whose garden this was, and how was it that he was in the garden? Euphrosinus replied, This garden is the home of God's chosen ones, and by the great goodness of, God, of my God I live here. Then the priest asked, But what do you do in this garden? He answered, I am in charge over the things that you see here, and when I see everything here and enjoy everything here, it fills my spirit with gladness. Then the priest said, Can you give me something of these good things? Yes, by the grace of God, take whatever you wish, you, you, you proceed as answer. 
The priest chose some apples. St. Euprosinus gave him the apples and instructed him to take delight in them. When the priest woke up, he decided that what he had seen was simply a plain old dream. But when he reached for his clothes, he discovered in reality the very apples that Euprosinus had given to him. The apples were marvelous and fresh and fragrant, and getting up from his bed, the priest hurried to church. In church, he saw Euphrosinus, and he asked Euphrosinus about the previous night, and persisted and persuaded Euphrosinus to reveal the secret. Humble-minded Euphrosinus finally answered the priest that he was indeed there in the garden. At the end of church services, the priest told everything to the rest of the monastery. He showed, the showed them the apples from paradise. The monks could not put into words how to describe the sweetness of the smell of those apples. They were amazed by the apples and the story that went with them. The, these monks were overflowing with joy when they all hurried to the kitchen to honor Blessed Euprosinus. Alas, he was gone. He had rushed away to avoid the admiration of people. Euphrosinus only needed God. He had no need or place for the praise of men. So Euphrosinus' life teaches us that humility is not about being dirty. It teaches us about knowing who we are and that all we need is God. Knowing who he was and who God is, that's all Euphrosinus needed. His wisdom was a wisdom that simply understood that we are made by God. Euphrosinus must have known God loves what he has made. God loves his creation. This is the kind of true knowledge and simple bump, country bumpkin knowledge that would have given Euphrosinus all of his secret power and strength. <clears throat> but he knew in his country bumpkin illiterate heart that we are made from dirt, but that the dirt was made to be good and that God himself became dirt, like us and for us. Surely, Euphrosinus understood in his heart the very old message found way back in the book of Genesis which describes God's opinion about dirt, the very best. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. <coughs> saint Euphrosinus, our humble saint, prayed to God who humbled himself for us that we too might become truly humble. <coughs>